on your sleeves now, gentlemen. Somebody's liable to miss these two, ain't they, Doc? These? Hardly. Mr. Ward and Mr. Mapes are very much alone in the world. No one will miss you, will they, gentlemen? Oh, no, sir. I can't think of anyone. This is a screwball stunt, Doc, even if it works. Oh, it will work. It will work now, and it will work tomorrow. Well, I gotta see it to believe it. Mr. Ward, I strongly recommend the view from the precipice. Would you move to the edge, please? Certainly, sir. I realize that all this is beyond your experience, my friend, but believe me, I know exactly what my serum is capable of. Maybe. Get on with it. Mr. Mapes, will you please move to a point directly behind Mr. Ward? Sure. How's this? That'll do nicely. Eh? Mr. Ward? How is the view? Why, you can see for miles. Mr. Mapes, you are an old friend of Mr. Ward's, are you not? <laughs> sure, we've been friends for years. Good. Push Mr. Ward over the edge, please. <laughs> was that all right? That was splendid, Mr. Mapes. Mr. Murdoch, we don't want Mr. Mapes wandering around telling strange stories, do we? Do you mind? <laughs> They'll never be missed. All right. Worked here. I don't mean it's going to work in Laredo. I assure you it will. Maybe. Just the same, I'm meeting Jack Slade there in case. You bungle this job and he'll finish it. Oh, you can save your money. Mr. Slade won't be needed. We'll see. But it, it must be a ranger who does the job. I can make it look that way. If we do it my way, it won't just look like it was a ranger. It, it will be a ranger. All right, we'll try it. But it better work. <laughs> it, it will work, I, I promise you. You want to kill Captain Parmelee for revenge. That is petty, Mr. Murdoch. Do it my way, and we will both profit. And my way cannot fail. I tell you, Captain Parmelee's the best CO any ranger company ever had. He's fair to you, and he treats you right. You make a mistake, and he balls you out, and that's all. Why, you couldn't ask for a better man. That's the man. You bet I'm a ranger, buddy. B Company. The best outfit in the whole state. Uh, I heard you talking about your captain. Parmelee, I believe. Is he a nice fellow? A uh, nice fellow? The best there is. What? Why, we'd follow him to hell and back. That wouldn't be him coming in now, would it? Oh, no, no. No, you'd know him. You'd know him. He looks like a cat. Well, thanks for the drink, pal. You're very welcome, Mr. Ben. <sighs> well, guess I'd better get... Better get... No. Why don't you come with me, Mr. Ben? I have some delightful old brandy in my hotel. Why, sure, Mr. Uh... A doctor. A doctor Duvain. Say the anything you Enjoy this fine old brandy, Mr. Bennett. You'll find it ineffable, ineluctable, highly redolent of hot sandy soil and warm grapes. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. What you said, Doc. Sip it, Mr. Bennett. Savor the bouquet. Roll it over your tongue and roll up your sleeve, please. You men of action have no imagination, Mr. Murdoch. Yeah, well, rangers worry me. It is not enough simply to kill Parmalee. It is essential that one of his trusted men do so. It will destroy the morale of the entire force, bring about investigations, public outcry. The rangers will be, to all intents and purposes, destroyed. Yeah, maybe. But we're taking a big chance, Doc. No chance at all. Please extend your arm, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> By the time Mr. Bennett has received three of these injections, which are much stronger than when taken orally, he will automatically do anything we tell him to do. You must try to keep your personal grudge against Captain Parmalee out of this, Mr. Murdoch. It is purely a business matter. When I have finished, all of Texas will be laid out before you, ready to be plucked. You sure cut yourself in for enough of it. The laborer is worthy of his hire. How do you feel, Mr. Bennett? Oh, I feel just fine, Doc. Wonderful. <laughs> Splendid. From now on, you are to do whatever I tell you to do. Is that clear? Sure, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful subject. I've never seen anyone more susceptible. Th this effect tends to wear off in a few hours. You'll seem perfectly normal. But through this device, I can return him to a state of total obedience immediately. Mr. Bennett, when you are shown one of these five-dollar gold pieces, you are to unquestionably obey the very next suggestion given you. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are to return here tomorrow morning at the same time. Yes, sir, I'm to return here at the same time, <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, you may go now. One thing, Mr. Bennett, I want you to be on your very best behavior. Yes, sir. Until tomorrow, then? Until tomorrow. I don't know. All this, this hocus-pocus is too much for me. I give you my word, my friend. Three days from now, Mr. Bennett will walk up to Captain Parmalee and shoot him dead where he stands. Hello, Harry. Not one crummy crack about this hat. It's beautiful. Now, look, I told you that if you'd make one crack... What did you say? It's got flair. That's what us rangers need. Flair. Just like that ad. Are you drunk? Of course not, Eric. I guess I just never appreciated that hat before. You really like it that much, huh? That's the prettiest hat I ever saw. Well, then, it's yours. I've got others. Oh, oh now, Eric, I couldn't do a thing like that. Take it. Wear it. I'm glad to see you developing some taste. Where are you going? Austin. A little uh, job for the governor. You know, Eric, someday some dressmaker's going to catch you for stealing all her ribbons. Mm -hmm. Eat your little heart out. Ha -ha. And while you're just uh, admiring that fancy scalp lock, Reese, Joe and I just got word that the Dawkins gang's holed up on Eagle Mountain. That's nice. Oh, well, don't just stand there, Reese. Let's go. Well, now, you fellas don't need me. You can handle it all by yourself. We can what? You 
you're not going out like that, are you? Without neckties. <laughs> uh, neckties? Well, when you when you go out to meet the public, you should always reflect credit on the Rangers. Reese, the Dawkins gang ain't the public. Not ain't, Joe. Is not. Reese, what's the matter with you? Oh, he probably met a dame, Chad. Dames have a real strange effect on him. Well, it's just that a man should always look his best. Like this hat, for example. Now, look at that hat. Just look at that. Now, uh, people look at that hat, they'd know that, that we give some thought to our appearance, now, wouldn't they? Reese, you've always told me that you'd like to take all of Eric's hat, put him on fence posts for target practice. Hmm. Oh, now. Gives one kind of a debonair look, don't you think? I think you've got a leak in your brain bucket, Reese. That's what I think. Hey, Reese, Captain Parmley wants to see you. Well, now, that's very kind of you telling me that. What a thoughtful fellow. You mean you're, you're uh, not afraid to go down and see the cat? Of course not. It's always a pleasure to talk things over with our leader. I beg your pardon. Of course. Well, maybe it's just a fever, Chad. I hear it's going around. Well, whatever it is, he's got it. Mm. Let's go. You wanted to see me, Captain? I want to congratulate you on that fine job you did bringing in Tom Burns. Oh, that's all right, Captain. Just doing my job. Well, you just have a little drink. Uh, Captain? Yeah? Uh, you don't happen to have some fine old brandy, do you? Brandy? Yeah, I, uh... I like brandy. I really enjoy it, Captain. Uh, it's ineffable, indelectable, and highly redolent of hot sandy soil and warm grapes. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have any brandy. Well, that's all right, Captain. Is that all? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Well, then I think I'll go take my bath. Go get the doc. Dawkins, you went after them? Oh, you crazy, Reese. We stood right up. Well, no wonder you got shot. You should have known better than to go after the Dawkins gang without me. Well, you big dumb ape, you were the one that's... Never mind, Reese. Chad got wing too. He, he's out there holding them down now. Where? The line shack on Eagle Mountain. Well, it's a wonder the both of you didn't get killed trying to pull a stunt like that without me. When are you going to learn, Joe? I ought to learn to keep my big mouth shut, Reese. Well, I'll go take care of it for you. You two don't know how to do nothing right. Pretty good. We killed about five of them. And letting Joe get shot. What's the matter with you? And letting yourself get out. Letting yourself get out. That down my careless said. If you stop shooting off your mouth and start shooting off your gun, we'd be better off. Let's go. Oh. Just pick them, Bob. Well, what are you doing out here? Let's get them out. They don't want to come. Then we got to pursue them. Come on.
broke my shoulder. Yeah, you're lucky. I was aiming for your eyeball. Now, let's go. Move. Ah. Outside. All right, you two. Come on, move. Hold it up a minute. Where's the money from that express job? Here. $5,000 and five dollar gold pieces. It's all there. We ain't used none of it. Please, Ranger, you got to give me a break. I didn't mean to get mixed up in this. Let me go. Please. You got all the gold? Please. Please, let me go. Certainly, son. Where's the kid? In there. In there? What's he doing in there? Well, he got away, Reese. What's the matter with you? He didn't want to come with us, Chad. It wouldn't be polite to make him, would it? He didn't want to come? Reese, how are you going to explain that to the captain? All right, Reese. I'll cover for you this time, but... Try not to let it happen again, all right? I didn't want to upset you, Chad. It's too bad Bob Dawkins got away. But he'll be picked up. I've, uh, I've got people all over the place looking for him. Anyhow, Bill was the important one. Yes, sir, that's what I figured. That's, uh... That's why we didn't give chase to Bob. We figured it'd be better to get Bill back here and get him locked up. Uh, all right, you can go. Thank you, Kevin. What is it, Cooper? Well, sir, it's Reese. Have you noticed it, too? You mean you have? Do you think I've been working him too hard? Oh, I don't think so, Captain. He's like a plow horse. He needs the work, but well, he's just not acting like himself. I'm going to take him off duty for a few days. You, you, don't, you don't think maybe he's cracking up? Do you? Oh, I doubt it. But it wouldn't hurt you to keep an eye on him. I'll do that, sir. To the minute, Mr. Bennett. Well, Captain Barmley always says procrastination is the thief of time. You agree, Mr. Murdoch? I still say it's going a long way around. <laughs> you won't when the Rangers completely collapse. Extend your arm, please, Mr. Bennett. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Bennett? Oh, yes, sir. Everything's just fine. I feel wonderful. <laughs> There. I must say, Mr. Bennett, you are most cooperative. Well, you're a nice guy, Doc. Anything you say is okay with me. <laughs> I trust you're being a good ranger and no trouble with your captain. Oh, no, sir, Doc. Everything just fine. Good, because I wouldn't want you to spoil Captain Parmley's surprise when you shoot him. Well, now, don't you worry none, Doc. Huh? Imagine the look he'll have on his face, huh? Can I roll the sleeve down now, You go right ahead, Mr. Bennett. I must say I'm very proud of you. You're a good boy. You may go now. Be sure and be back tomorrow at the same time. Oh, I'll be I'll be here, sir. Don't you worry none about that. You know, Doc, if that stuff of yours really works, you could dose up a bank teller and He'd just hand everything over to you. You wouldn't even have to use a gun. <laughs> exactly. Believe me, Mr. Murdoch, 
In a very short time, you're going to realize all you desire. You're sure he's been seeing Jake Murdoch? He's in his room right now. I just saw him go in. Last time I sent Jake to prison, I warned him to stay clear of Laredo. Any wants on him? Not in Texas, I checked. How about this other guy? He's registered at the hotel under the name of Paul Duvain. I don't know anything about him. Well, if he's hanging around with Murdoch, he's up to something. I'll check him out, and then I'll pay Jake a little visit. Well, be careful of him. He's not partial to the Rangers. And I don't like him. That makes us even. <laughs> Jake, you've got an awful short memory. I told you to stay clear of Laredo. I got my rights, family. You got nothing on me? I'll think of something. You must be Mr. Duvain. That's right. You're in bad company. Oh, well, Mr. Murdoch is a business associate of mine. You couldn't have given yourself a worse recommendation. What are you doing in Laredo, Jake? Private business. Ours, not yours. Last time you went to prison, you said you'd pay me back. Did I say that? Did you come to try? <laughs> I learned my lesson, Captain. I'm an honest man now. Congratulations. Stay away from my rangers. He knows about Bennett. He couldn't. Only that we've been seen together. Nothing else. But you heard what he said. A shot in the dark. Relax, Mr. Murdoch. Have another drink. Everything is proceeding... Beautifully. Reese. Yes? That's your second bath in two days. Cleanliness is next to godliness. What'd I tell you? It sure isn't natural. He's gonna wash off his protective coating if he's not careful. <laughs> you know, it's not just the baths, Joe. He hasn't been mad once in two days either. Oh, maybe he's just got some kind of bug chat. Well, I don't know. It scares me. It's just not Reese. No. No, it isn't. Oh. oh it could be. He's just, just drunk. Drunk? He's not even drinking. Nothing but brandy. <laughs> brandy? Brandy! Reese is drinking brandy? I mean, there's something really wrong, boy. Yeah. Well, have you tried just, uh, just talking to it? Yeah. All I get is that big, hmm, smile. You know, Chad, I've known a lot of guys to crack up before. But, uh, but they always do a lot of yelling. Leave it to Reese to get it wrong. What are you going to do? I don't know. Talk to him again, I guess. I'll prod him, Chad. Get him mad. But get that smile off his face. Yeah, could, I guess, if I have to. You got to do something. Can't just let him fold up like that without trying something. Look at him, would you? Not just about enough to make you sick. Mm. Well, I'm not going to stand for it. Mm. I'd rather see him shot up. How do you like my cravat, Jack? It makes me sick. Oh, you're just saying that. Reese, Reese, what is it with you? You, you smell like you got stinking cologne all over your hair and you got it all slicked down. Are you wearing a necktie? A man should look his best. Oh, boy. Especially when you're in the public eye like we are. Reese, he's got to be that guy, Devane, that you've been hanging around with. Who? Duvain. I don't know any Duvain. Reese, you've been hanging around him and Jake Murdoch like a, like a mud cat at a water hole. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Chad. Mistaken? I've been watching you. No. Really, Chad, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't know any Duvain, and I never heard of this Murdoch. You're sick. I feel wonderful, Chad. I really appreciate your concern for me. But you've got to believe me, there is no cause for alarm. Now, why don't you join me at the saloon for a sniffer of fine old brandy? Brandy? A snifter? Oh, you, you roll it on your tongue, and you get, you get all the aroma of nice, warm grapes. Mm -hmm. Won't you join me, Chad? I don't think so, Reese. You go ahead. If you insist. It's just like I told you, Joe. He's right out of his mind. You can't just let him go like that. What? Well, we owe him an effort or something, Jay. All right. I'm going to go down there 
and pick a fight with him. Maybe that'll snap him out of it. Brandy. Hello, Chad. Changed your mind, I see. You, you don't even smell like a man. Have some fine old brandy. Fine old brandies for fine old women. Men drink red eye. You don't know what you're missing, Chad. Reese, you're acting like an old woman. You hear me? Of course I hear you. You're being terribly loud. And you call yourself a ranger? You ought to be out running a girls' school. Oh, I, I don't think I have the education for that. Reese, you're yellow. You're chicken! You haven't even got the guts to fight! Well, I wish you would have some of this fine old brandy, Chad. It'd make you feel better. Charlie, give me a drink. Drink! Reese Bennett! Well, Mr. Don Levy, how nice to see you again. Oh, I hit it, Reese. Not much, but enough for me to pay folks back. And I never forgot that money you lent me. Well, it was nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, yes, it was. It kept me going until I finally hit. Said it was going to pay you back, didn't it? I'm going to do it. Here. Five dollars in gold. Squares us up, don't it? Pardon me. Reese Bennett, I still say you are yellow. Oh, go soak your head. nice day you making a public spectacle of yourself what is the idea what idea is that captain cooper can you explain that well it beats me captain we were just in a saloon having a drink and he came out here well actually we were having an argument at least i was and i well i told him to go soak his head and, and he came out here and got in the horse trough we uh we've been working you a little too hard haven't we old man oh no sir captain no sir i feel just fine please stop dripping on me I think you better come along with us. Uh, maybe a nice, quiet nap will make you feel better. Well, I feel just fine, Captain. The water was very refreshing. I should have seen it coming, Captain. The way he's been acting, I, I guess it happened. It looks like it. Well, now, I, I don't know why you two are so upset. Everything just fine. Everything will be fine. You just come along with us, Ben. What happened? I'm not sure. But somehow, he must have been keyed off. You mean somebody else got control of him? It could happen. Look, your idea's a bust. Now we're gonna do it my way, Jack Slade. But, but, but it has to be a ranger who kills him. I'll get a ranger's gun, and then he can lose it accidentally, on purpose. Uh, they won't keep Bennett long. In a few hours, he'll seem entirely normal. They'll have no reason to hold him. Yeah, I'll get to him and uh, give him the final injection. I ain't taking no more chances. We lost enough time on this fool stunt as it is. I'm seeing Slade. This is the cell block, Captain. That's right. What are we doing here? Oh, it's nice and quiet in here. That's just what you need, Reese. A place to rest and relax and time to think it over. There was no need for you to go to all this trouble. Reese. Uh, 
Why, why did you climb in the horse trough? What horse trough, Captain? Did, did I say something, pal? Or did I upset you? Well, now, you couldn't upset me, Chad. Why, we're buddies. Well, then why didn't you get mad at me? Well, why, why didn't you hit me or something? Well, I, I wouldn't do a thing like that, Chad. It isn't cool. Well, uh, you uh, take it easy, Reese, and get a little rest. Maybe you'll feel better. I feel fine already, Captain. But if you think I should rest, that's good enough for me. Come on, Jack. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. <sighs> you know, it's a hard thing to see a man crack up right before your eyes. Yeah, I know. Must be something we could do, Captain. I know what to do for a bullet wound, Cooper. But something like this, I just don't know. We can't just let him rot. He's, he's one of the best men we've got. Not in his present condition. There's got to be a doctor or somebody this that can do something. This calls for a very special kind of a doctor. Anyhow, maybe the rest will do him some good. Come on. I hope so. <laughs> Normally works late. Probably come to the saloon for a, a drink. Now you get him. Here, use this. Be sure to leave it where they'll find it. Five hundred now. Five hundred when he's dead. Just take it easy, Reese. I'll take it easy on your neck. Well, the captain said you was to rest. Rest? What do I need to rest for? If you don't know, Reese... You Reese, don't let me out of here. I'll tear you in half. You sound normal enough to me. Well, I'll normal somebody. I don't get out of this hoose, gal. I'll talk to the captain. Well, you better. The whole world's gone flat out of its skull. Are you sure you're all right, Reese? I'll be all right as soon as I get out of here. What am I doing in here, anyhow? You don't remember? I wouldn't ask. You jumped in the water trough. Oh, come on, Captain. Oh, come on, Reese. If we hadn't pulled you out, you might have drowned. And I thought you were a friend of mine. You've been acting pretty strangely. Oh, ain't nothing of the kind. And how come you've been treating me like I'm, I'm some kind of a... Nut. All right, a nut. How come? What did I ever do to you? Reese, you've been... Oh, how do you feel, Reese? Mad. How do you expect me to feel? Throw me in the clank. You don't remember anything that happened? Oh, Captain, you know how it is with me after I've had a few drinks. Half the time, I don't remember what happened. <laughs> he sounds pretty normal to me, Captain. Reese, if I let you out of here, what will you do? I'll go down to the saloon and get a drink. Wash this jail stink out of my mouth. I've got to admit, that sounds pretty normal. All right, I'll let you go. Well, it's about time. Oh, just one thing. If you start feeling kind of funny or anything, let me know. And maybe I can arrange a furlough or something. I never feel funny. What's wrong with everybody? One, one more thing, Reese. When you do go to the saloon and you get your drink, what are you going to have? Brandy? Brandy! Brandy for putting on the hair. I'm going to have a drink. All right, Reese, move out. Oh, the next time you get an urge to jump in the water trough, see me first. Captain, you sure you ain't been working too hard? You know, I could use a drink myself. You get some rest. I'm going to keep my eye on him. Oh, just a second, Captain. I'll go along with you. Watch where you're going, stupid. Reese, 
What are you doing? Ah, uh, this clown bumped into me. Well, you can't go around town beating up every guy that bumps into you, you big ape. Do you know who this is? I couldn't care less. It's Jack Slade. We got a half a dozen wants on him. So now you got him. Lock him up, Chad. Yes, sir. Born day, seen anything like it, I'll tell you. They let him go. I knew they would. No matter. When Slade gets Parmalee, we won't need Bennett. Premature as usual, Mr. Murdoch. Parmalee. What happened to Slade? Apparently, your little plot didn't work. Now, shall we go ahead with mine? Relax, Mr. Murdoch. Things will start happening very shortly, just as I predicted. Oh, Parmalee's in there. He'd notice you stay out of sight. I'll take care of our ranger friend. Hey! Hey, let's have some service around here. Come on. Out here, his old pal. Howdy, Sam. Hey, uh, there are a bunch of liars around here, ain't there? Mean who? Well, the things people have been saying about you. Huh? What they saying about me? People are saying that you threw yourself in a horse trough. <laughs> they're crazy. Yeah, worse than that. They're, they're deli deliberate liars. Talking about my friend like that. I ain't gonna stand for it. You know, Sam, you're absolutely right. People around here been been lying about me something awful. Even Captain Parmalee. Yeah, the worst liars are right in here. We're we gonna stand for it. Hey there, bud. Watch what you're doing. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bennett. I I didn't mean to jostle you. Here, I have something for you. Never mind about that, dude. Reese Old Pie, you know what we ought to do? We ought to tear this whole place apart. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Get Reese. Try not to hurt him. Well, that about does it. Not yet, it doesn't. I want him. All right, hold it now. Just back off. Uh, hiya, fellas. Nice to see you. He didn't know what he was doing, Captain. I only wish I could believe that. Take him over to jail, lock him up, but gently. All right, let's go. Give me a hand. All right, boys, over to the jail. All right, suppose you tell me what happens next. He got the third injection. The next time I see him, I give him the order to shoot Parmalee. I was going to tell him this time, but something went wrong. Ah, something's always going wrong. Well, not, not anymore. His conditioning is complete. From now on, it, everything is going our way. Just sit down, Reese. There you go. Well, why'd you do it? Why did I do what, Chad? Hmm. Oh, never. Never mind. What do you got in your hand, Reese? Let me let me just take a look at it, would you? Let me see it. Now, where'd you get this? Where'd I get what, Chad? Never mind. I think I understand. Got you too, hadn't it, Chad? First Reese, now you. <laughs> it must be something in the air, Chad. Chad, your boots are on fire. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Chad.
Chad, I'm gonna blow your head off. Okay. Now everything's gonna be just fine, Chad. Just need yourself a little bit of rest. Hey, give me, give me that easy, thing, will you? Easy. Reacting with a general de uh, depression of the cortex in conjunction with a mild euph euph euphoria. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? It's got you just like it does Reese. Well, you clown, I'm just trying to find out what the matter with him is. Well, I know what's the matter with Reese. It's all that dumbness he stored up over the years. It just broke out all at you, once. You know, well, you better watch out because your show signs are busting through. Now, give me that book. Come on. Where are you going? I'm down to see the captain. Chad, you walk in there with all those books, the captain's going to lock you up, too. Well, let me tell you something. The captain's not as dumb as you are. He don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Now, what do you want me to do with these? Take them into Reese and hit him over the head with them? Captain, I picked these books out. Now, they're all about chemicals and things like that. Aren't you happy with your job, Chad? Isn't it obvious that there's something very strange going on with Reese? You can say that again. All right. Now, Captain, take a look at that. Five dollar gold piece. Right. I took it away from Reese when we locked him up a while ago. Now, you look here, Cooper. You don't take advantage of Reese just because he's temporarily unbalanced. Captain, you don't understand. Now, there's something I haven't told you. Reese let Bob Dawkins go. Yes, sir, he just opened the door and let him run. He what? Yeah. Now, listen. That was right after Reese picked up the sack of money from the express job. Now, I'll bet you there were a thousand five-dollar gold pieces in there just like that one. And when Reese jumped in the horse trough, just before that happened, an old man who owed him five dollars paid him off in gold. And you told him to go soak his head. Yes, sir. And now he's busted up the saloon. He had that five-dollar gold piece in his hand. Now, either Reese is suddenly allergic to $5 gold pieces, or there's something very strange going on. Go ahead. Well, sir, I remember in New Orleans, I saw a man who could make folks do whatever he wanted them to. He'd give them a pill, and then they'd cackle like roosters or bark like dogs, anything at all. Now, I've been studying up on the kind of stuff that make men do those kinds of things. It's all in the books there. What, are the, what do they say? Well, it's kind of complicated. There are compounds of sulfides and sulfates that affect a man's mind kind of stupefy him and it says in the books that it, it well it heightens their suggestibility now i have no way of being sure but i think that's what's happened to reese and every time he has a five dollar gold piece in his hand he'll do whatever anybody tells him to do like soak his head or let bob dawkins go or bust up a saloon if somebody tells him that's the way i got it figured i sent a dozen wires on this fellow devane he's some kind of a quack doctor a record for swindling, but he knows quite a bit about chemicals. Then that's it? Could be. The way Reese is acting and the stuff he read about the chemicals, it, it certainly could. Well, no, I don't know anything about Duvain, but I do know Jake Murdoch. And he'd give a lot to get a hold of something that he could use to make folks do whatever he tells them to. Still, it's, it's pretty far-fetched. I know it is. We better check it out. Why'd you bust up the saloon? What saloon is that, Captain? Oh, never mind. I, uh, I got a little present for you. Oh, good. That's swell of you, Captain. Reese? Reese, pay attention. Get lost, Reese. Get out of this, Cooper. From now on, I'll handle it. You think you should, Captain? Oh, I got a feeling this is my show from the beginning. Murdoch owes me one. He's good as told me he's ready to pay me back. All right, sir. That's what you want. Reese, I want you to take me to the nice old man who tells you things. Who's that, Captain? Well, isn't Duvain, the, you know, the fellow that gives you the message? Oh, medicine? you mean the doc. I'd be glad to, Captain. Now, when we get there, I want you to be sure and do what I tell you. Will you do that? Well, you know I will, sir. Where is he? He's over at the hotel. He's a real nice fella. I'm sure he is. Shall we go see him? Oh, that'd be swell, Captain. Just swell. He'll be glad to see us, too. I'm sure he will be. Let's go. Why don't you face it? 
You botched it up. Not yet this time. Not unless you get your hands on Bennett. I'll get to him. What are you doing? Doc always has me roll up my sleeve. Oh, won't be necessary this time. Who is it? Race Bennett. Come in, my boy, come in. Don't do anything foolish, Jake. Besides Reese here, I'm probably the fastest gun in the room. Just the man, Reese? Yeah, yeah. sure is, Captain. Uh, hiya, Doc. Uh, you gonna give me some of that fine old brandy? Mr. Bennett, do you remember everything I told you? Of course I do, Doc. I don't forget nothing. Remember what I told you we were going to do with Captain Parmelee? I sure do, Doc. Well, do it now. Draw. Pretty fast, huh, Doc? Beautiful, Mr. Bennett. Just beautiful. Reese. Catch, Reese. Shoot both of them, Reese. Wait. I took the precaution of emptying his gun before he came over. I guess I've seen enough. You two want to come along quietly? Suzanne? No, no. I'll go. Don't shoot. I guess we won't be seeing you for a long time around Laredo. We'll miss you, won't we, Reese? Is he going away, Captain? For a long, long time. Uh, Captain? Yes, Reese. Uh, could I have his fine old brandy? I'll buy you a barrel of the stuff. Hey, come on, Devane, let's go. Now, I'll tear you in half! The next time I'm going to get mad! What happened, Joe? Beats me, Kevin. I just tried to pay him some money, I owe Five dollars? Yeah. In gold? <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I should have warned you, Joe. Next time, just write him out a check. Come on, I'll make him buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs>